Hey guys, this is Rami Hanna with Tillpixel, and I'm going to show you how we create pillows in 3ds Max. And uh, it's a very simple way to do it. It's a very quick process. And I'm by no means a cloth expert on creating pillows, but uh, this is a process that works. And so I'm going to show you how we do it. So first off, I'm going to create a plane, which is my floor. And I'm going to create a box, which is going to be my pillow. And there we go. Now for the, for the, uh, the box, it's, it's important that it has enough segments uh, in both directions. Here I've got eight, and this one's eight as well. That's fine. So now that I've got my box, this is going to be my pillow, and my plane is going to be my floor. And uh, it's important to have a floor because you have to have a collision object when creating this pillow. So let's go ahead and select both, and then we're going to create a, a cloth modifier apply to both of them. So say cloth, enter. So now it's in italics because it's applied to both objects. Go ahead and hit object properties. So our box is going to be the pillow. So set that to cloth. And our plane is going to be the collision object. So set that to collision and hit OK. All right. So now when we run our simulation, hit simulate local. You can see it's not doing much. So there is our, uh, our cloth on the floor. So go ahead and turn off the simulation. I'm going to reset the state and go back to object properties. And uh, there's a select the box and there's a magic value here called pressure. If we if we add this value here, uh, I'm going to say 30. Hit enter and say OK. And then when we run the simulation again, boom, it gave it uh, some puffiness, which is nice. Um, so now we've got a pillow, which is which is great. Um, and you can see it's floating above the, um, the ground. And so let's reset the simulation, go back to object properties, and uh, select your collision object. And you'll see that there's a value here under collision object where it has an offset. Let's set that offset back to zero. Say, OK, let's run that simulation again. There we go. So now our pillow is sitting nice on, on the ground where it needs to be. Uh, and that's basically it for creating the pillow. Now, if it's not puffy enough, uh, we can increase the, uh, we can increase the, the pressure on the box. So you increase that to maybe 50 and see how that looks. Uh, run your simulation again. Um, and you can, you can play with those values until you get something that you like. Uh, I'm pretty happy with the way that looks. And so I'm going to, I'm going to turn it off. So as you can see, it's pretty low poly. Typically what I do is I'll add a, uh, a turbo smooth on it. And you can see that uh, it's, it's smoothed out my pillow. And a turbo smooth will, uh, will give it the value that it needs to make it nice smooth. Now there are a couple of things with, with the pillow. If you want to add more detail to it, um, this right now is, it's pretty basic. There's different types of pillows. There is a pillow where you can add some piping to go around it, and I can show you how, how to do that very quickly. I'm going to add an edit poly, and I'm going to select this edge, and then hold shift, and it's going to select the loop. So now I've got my loop, and I'm going to create a shape from this edge. So it's creating another shape, basically creating a spline from the, my selection. So now I have a spline, and if I turn that on, uh, I can turn down the radius on it, and very quickly I have some piping that I can use. If you look at it, um, there it is. And if it's still faceted, you can run another iteration on your turbo smooth um, down here. Right now it's just one. If I set it to two, it's really going to smooth that out. And of course you'll have to uh, redo the spline. So let's come back here and select the edge and the loop, create shape. And there it is. There's my piping that runs all the way around the object. So that's one way to create an edge. Um, some pillows have a piping like that. Another way to create an edge, if you come back under the, the turbo smooth, uh, we're going to turn that off. Actually, I'm going to uh, create a new edit poly underneath the turbo smooth. Uh, so what I'm going to do is actually create another edge. Um, so I'm going to select this edge, and I'm going to create the, the ring around these, and I'm going to do a uh, connect. So 
So I'm going to go ahead and um, create one more edge around it, which is fine. Okay. Um, and one more thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do an extrude. And to do that extrude, I'm going to go to wireframe mode so you can see where I'm extruding. Um, so if I extrude out, let's see, this is the amount I'm extruding. So instead of extruding out, I'm going to extrude in, right? So you see the wireframe. It doesn't have to be very, very much, very far. That's, a, that's good enough. Uh, so now we can get out of our edit poly. And when you turn the turbo smooth on, it'll smooth the, um, the two edges together. And it's like a stitching that goes on the inside of, of our pillow. So that's, that's another way to create um, edging around, uh, stitching around your pillow, which is uh, a lot of times, a lot of pillows are done like this. Uh, there are other factors. So that's, that's the basics for creating a pillow. There are other factors for creating uh, pillows and folds with a cloth modifier, which is actually uh, pretty interesting. So I'm going to do now is I'm going to create uh, a cylinder and I'm going to show you how we can create some, uh, some folding or some tapering. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, increase the number of sides on this. Uh, the height segments, you want to make sure you have enough height segments so our cloth is going to work correctly the way it should. And uh, for now, I'm going to go ahead and delete this floor. We don't need the floor. Uh, let's go ahead and turn this into an edit poly. I'm going to select my top face and my bottom face. And I'm going to detach it. So I'm going to detach it. There we go. And I'm actually going to move the pivot on my top and bottom. So to do that, go to the hierarchy tab, uh, say effect pivot, and I'm going to center it to the object. And then let's turn that off. So now my pivot's in the middle. So now we're going to create this, uh, the, ed the sides here as a cloth object. So let's go ahead and add our cloth modifier. And I'm going to do something a little different here. Uh, under the, uh, the sub-object mode, there's an area called group. And what you can do is you can create groups. And basically, these are seams of uh, of verts where we can lock them down. So I'm going to select the top here, create a group, and the name of it's fine. And we're going to assign it to another object. We're going to assign it to uh, the top of that cylinder. So now it's assigned to the top of that cylinder. And I'm going to do the same thing here. We're going to create another group right here. Say make group. And it's fine for the name. And we're going to assign that one. Click node and to the bottom. So now we've got that. So there we go. So now when we run our simulation, let's, uh, let's make sure it's cloth. So go to object properties and we're going to make it cloth and we can give it, uh, <clears throat> you can give it pressure if you want. Uh, I'm going to say 40 and say, okay. So now let's go ahead and run the simulation. I'll show you what's going on. So when I hit simulate, now you can see how it puffed out like that. It's basically turning that into cloth that has pressure. Well, if you select the top and bottom now, those because we created those groups on the edges of the cloth, it's sticking to the tops of my cylinders. So now if I scale this down, you'll see what's going to happen to my cloth. I'm creating, uh, basically, stretch, I'm stretching and moving cloth. You can see that. You can, um, and what gets really interesting is if you start scaling it in your X and Y, then you start to get this this taper effect, which is kind of nice. It's a very quick way to create uh, pillows with nice uh, seams. And uh, and because we have that pressure, it's still using the pressure. So it's, it's pushing it out. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, reset. I'm going to select my uh, simulation, uncheck that, reset the state, and I'm going to add more pressure to my cylinder. So let's set that to 60. Say OK. And we're going to run that simulation again. And now when I, when I squeeze this down, you can see the more pressure I have, the, uh, the better it's going to, to push. And you can see it's doing some strange things down here. 
So you just kind of have to play with it to do what you want it to do. And it's behaving like it would in reality if it had gravity. So you can see it's hanging down here and here it's not hanging as much. So if I rotate it, you can see it's start, starting to turn it much like it would. So you play with it until you're you're happy with the the effect that you that you get. You can you can shift it, you can move it. Um, I mean it's it's basically a real time simulation. So it's uh, it's pretty cool. And then this is something I've played with to create uh, fabrics or you know, pieces of furniture uh, that that have these these folds. Uh, and when I when I've got it the way I want it, uh, I'll go ahead and hit my cloth and then uh, turn off the stimulation. And then when you're, when you're happy with the way you've got it, um, you can just turn into a poly. Uh, again, we can add a turbo smooth to make it nice and smooth. So you can see we've got some nice folds here. And then again, if you want to add you know, a, connect, a connector between the two, uh, we, can, we can easily do that by creating uh, the piping that we had before. So I'm going to say convert to edge. And we're going to create a shape, create shape from selection, which is fine. So there, now we have our nice piping. If you want to make it bigger, select that edge, increase the, the scale on it um, just slightly. And it's, you'll notice that this, it's much smaller because we scaled our object. And so you may want to do an X form on it to get the scale back to where it used to be. So those are the basics for creating uh, pillows. And uh, I'm going to post this uh, on, on the Autodesk forum. If you have any questions, uh, please feel free to, to ask. I'll be more than happy to get back to you on it. Thanks.